Hi, it's Terry with the Cover Chipboard, and I'm here with a new project. Um, it's called Margana's Curio Cabinet. And um, I'm working on the SVGs, putting this together and fine-tuning it. So it should be, the video will show up before um, the uh, actual files are available on the blog. But it should be the first week in October might be as soon as October the 1st. So kind of watch my blog for it. Um, and if you're not registered on the blog, go ahead and register and sign up for the newsletter and you'll get a notice when it comes out live. So um, I'm going to start off. I designed this as a cabinet that has two sides, a back and a front. And the front side has two doors that will open outward. And there are caskets on the inside of the door. So it's it's each side is like a, an inch and a half deep, I think. So it's like three inches deep. Um, it's about, oh, I think it's about seven inches in height. Let me double check before I tell you wrong. Oh, it looks like eight and a half inches in height and closed about six and a half to seven inches wide. So, um... I'm going to get started, and uh, the materials list will be in the blog as well. Nothing real exceptional. I've used Cricut black chipboard, or craft board, and then graphics medium weight black chipboard, and then pattern papers. So that's really just the basics for it, and I've used some uh, black soot ranger distressing ink. It's by Tim Holtz. So let's get started on this. Um, this is a casket that's been completed, and as I said, it will be adhered, attached to the um, inside of the front door. And I picked up these little skeletons at Michael's. I think they were three in a package for like five bucks or something like that. So you can find those, or you could just find another image and stick it in there. Paper doll, you could do a witch, you could do anything you want. So I'm going to show you how to create these first. So when you do your cutouts, you'll have four pieces, strips like this, that have folds in them. There's two that are alike and two that are like, And you need to set those together so that you've got two groups with, each, with two of each one. And then you're going to pull one from each group for one casket. The other two will be for the other caskets or coffins. <clears throat> and go ahead and fold your pieces up. And you want to make sure that you have these oriented correctly. So you need to figure out, I think this one goes this way. Yeah, so this one will go on the right side this way. And this one will go on the left side. And again, I folded it wrong. I did that with the other one too. So, let me refold this real quick. So, this one's going to go like this. So, that will make up your whole casket outsides. So, we're going to go ahead and glue these together first using these little tabs. And I'm just using Scotch Quick Dry Tacky Glue. I'll put a little bit of glue here on this tab. And then I want to glue these together as straight as I possibly can. Try to be meticulous with it and get it pretty straight. Give that a second to dry. And this is going to be covered, so if you get glue on it, don't worry about it. And now I'm going to glue the other tab. And again, try to be very careful and get straight as you can. Give that a second to dry. <clears throat> I love this craft board. It's so easy to work with. It's fairly um, sturdy. Okay, so now I'm going to go and put glue on these tabs, all these inside tabs. And you don't need tons, just enough to secure it. 
because it's going to attach to the um, back of the door to secure it even further and you're going to cover it with pattern paper. Then you take a back piece, set one piece in there, and then just kind of work your way around and let it fall down in there and attach it and glue it. And so that's your structure. So then you're going to take one of your pattern papered pieces and we're going to glue it into the back. Just kind of let it fall in and push it down. And then you'll have um, two pieces with your pattern paper for the inside and you'll have two long strips that we're going to use on the outside. Now there's more here than what you need but I did that for a reason and I'll show you that in a minute. So again, check your orientation for your papers. So now we're going to glue that in and this little tab, we're going to go ahead and glue this little tab down too. So you want to make sure you put it up. And some of this will stick up above the edge, so don't glue right along your upper edge. Just kind of go so far and stop with your glue. Because I wanted this little piece of trim to show. It's just a very small amount, but... Okay, so now I'm going to glue this in here. Start at one part. Make sure you get into those corners well. Work your way around. Oh, making sure that you're at the bottom here. That it doesn't creep up on you. And then, if you need to, take a little tool, if your crease is off a little bit there, and you can kind of play with it. So you keep those corners, you want to keep those as best as you can. Like I said, if you need to use a tool to recrease or help that along, you can do that. So you can see now we have this little strip that sticks up over the top. So same thing on this piece. It's going to go... Hi. Trying to figure it out there. Yeah, it's going to go... No, no, no. Got it wrong. There we go. And on this piece, there is this little tab. I should have said to leave part of this unglued. Leave the end of this unglued so it can go over top of that tab. And you want to double check your fitting. And let's go ahead and glue that. On the tab, you can glue the most of that. Then we're going to stick this in, fit it in here into that corner, come along, fit it in there all the way to the end. Whoops, fit this in here, glue that tab down. And then you're going to take this, add some more glue to it, and then push it over and cover up that tab. So 
So now you've got your uh, inside cover. Now for the outside pieces, you're gonna take these and use your score tape and run a piece of score tape along the edge on both sides. Oops, I ran out of score tape. And there we go. Make sure your tape's down good. And then pull off your backing. And then you're going to take this, start at the bottom. And actually, we're going to start just a tear a tad bit over. Let it fold. Adhere it down again. Let it fold right along that back edge. Let it fold. And you're going to go just a hair over, so we want to clip this off. Once you reach that, that edge, just go a little bit past that edge and fold that little piece over. Make sure you push your tape down and it's adhered well. Let me get this piece out. Go to our next piece. And I did this this way because not everybody's is going to fold exactly the same way and therefore this will allow for you to have that difference. So then start at the bottom again where you had the other piece and do the same thing. Work around that bottom edge all the way back to the top. And stop, hold your finger under there before you get to the edge, and you can clip this short because it's on the bottom and it's not going to show. Actually, mine wound up on the top, but you're still not going to see it. See, you can barely see that, if at all. You have to really look hard. Secure your tape down well. now you can tell we have that little bit of trim showing at the top all the way around. So now I'm going to use my black soot and I'm just going to go around the edges like this. Just to distress it. Then I'm going to go along the folds. And then I'm going to go along this back edge. And that's it. Our coffins are complete. You can attach your little skeletons in there or do whatever you want. If you don't want to do the skeletons, you could make shelves for in here. Just whatever you want. So there's those two. We're going to set these aside, and when I come back, we're going to work on the um, back section. Okay, here's the second part. We're going to start with the back. And you'll have your back piece, your left and right sides, a top and a bottom, and four shelf pieces. You'll also find a, an SVG file for... Um, Construction strips is what we call them, and it's just a, um, a strip with a score line down the center. You want to fold it on that, and then you want to lay a piece of score tape on each side right up next to, as close as you can get to that scored line. And that's going to help us with the construction of our cabinet. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take this first piece, 
and I'm going to lay it up next to here and measure it. And when I see the end, I'm going to crimp it with my fingernail. And then I'm going to cut it. At that point, I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to start from the fold. You have the open side away from you. Start from that corner and turn it inward and cut just a little slit off of there. Same thing on the other end. And I'm going to need two of these. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this to measure. And cut my second piece. Cut my little corners. Just remember when you do this, always cut with the folded edge towards you and the open side away from you. Now I'm going to take one of these sides and I'm going to butt it up next to here, making sure that the bottom points match. Leave that there. I'm going to pull my score tape off of one side. Oops. Actually, it's easier to do this if you start with, I'm going to get some of these pieces out of the way. Just start with your piece down here because you want this, again, you've got the folded edge away from you, the open edge towards you, and you want to lay this so that it's right along this edge. As close to that edge as you can get it. Just lay your score tape down or your strip down. Then, if you have a bone folder, you might want to go ahead and just burnish that. Now you're going to remove the second strip. Let me take my side here. I'll lay this down, butt it up next to it. Again, making sure my bottom points match. And then you're going to just push that over onto this part. And you want to burnish that real good. And what that does is it makes a hinge and it holds our two pieces together. So same thing on the other side. Oops. Just line that up right along the edge. it down. I'm going to pull this piece off. We're going to butt this up. Make sure points are meeting. Push it over and then burnish it really good. And you can use any tool for a burnishing tool. You don't have to have a bone folder. So there's two, those two pieces. Now we're going to do the same thing with our top and our bottom. So I'm going to measure and cut that piece. I'm going to cut the second piece while I'm at it. Cut my corners. This just helps keep it from getting too bulky. Now, I did that wrong, but I'm used to doing it, so don't copy me. Do what I said. I'll try to remember to do it the right way. Okay. I'm trying to think if it would be better to go ahead and put our pattern paper on now or not. I think we'll wait till we get all of these pieces in. I think so. I don't think we're going to have to do any trimming, but we might. I try to get it as accurate as possible, but sometimes I'm not. It's not. And again, you're just going to attach this to the edge. Pull this next piece off. 
and you're going to butt it up so that it's even. Is this the top or the bottom? Yes, yeah, the bottom, okay. Now, if you don't wanna use construction strips, you can just glue those pieces on. However, I'm always kind of leery of doing that when you're just gluing those little bitty edges. There we go. Okay, now we've got our top piece. And our top piece, this will have scored lines for you. This top piece goes right along this line. So let's do that one. Sometimes it wants to come up, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. I'll start from this end. This one, you're going to have to just kind of try to line it up with that scored line, almost on top of that scored line. And if you want, what you can do is pull your piece up and make sure you're in the right spot. And you can lightly push this down and let this come up and make sure that you're in the right spot. Looks good. Once you know that it's in the right spot, go ahead and burnish that really good. Okay, so now we've got to connect these pieces. And what we're gonna do, each of these sides is about an inch long. So you just wanna cut a piece that's about an inch long. So if you wanna measure, and you're gonna need four pieces. Okay, and we're not going to cut the ends of these. So you can go ahead and uh, pull your tape off. And you wanna set one here, right up next to the edge. Same thing on this side. And at the bottoms. And the same thing down here on this other bottom piece. And I'm just kind of going in the middle between the distances. Oops, secure that. That was real good. And now we're going to take this piece off here. And we're going to pull these together. And once we pull them together, you're just gonna have the corners of them kiss, if you can see what I'm doing there. Oops. And then secure it. So see these corners just kinda meet. Same thing on this side. Then you can pull these off. Corner meat. Oops. 
so I don't want to come off. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Ah! Darn it, I can't get a hold of this one. There we go. That's where tweezers come in handy sometimes. Okay. Put those together. So now you're all connected here. Looks good. So now we can go ahead and put our paper, pattern paper in. Now the sheet that goes, that's just this big rectangle, that's the one that goes inside here. And I think I might have to make a little adjustment here. Yeah, I'm going to. It's a tad bit too long. So, let me pull that out. And I'm going to cut, go over here and cut that real quick. Okay, now I took this, once it's been cut, the rectangle, and then I did made score lines on it. I started at the bottom and went an inch and a half, an inch and a half, inch and a half, inch and a half. And then, of course, I had to trim off just a little piece there, but now it should fit fine, yeah. Now we're good to go. So now I'm going to take this. And I guess I'll use glue on it. And I'm just going to glue this down. And those score marks are so that you can tell where to put your shelves in at. But you want your back paper in before you put your shelves in. Okay. Now you still should be able to see, hopefully you can, your score lines in here. We want to go ahead and put our side papers in and our top and bottom in as well before we put our um, other pieces in. Okay. Now these pieces, I'm going to take and just do a little bit of around the edges. Okay, so these, I'm going to go ahead and just glue these in. Try to get up next to the edges. Gypsy. Make sure I've got this going the right way. Okay, there we go. There's the other side. I guess if you want, well, no, you couldn't do that. I was going to say you could put these on before you put it together, but... Okay, so that's all in there. Mine was a little short here, but that's okay. So that's this part pretty well set. Um, I do have pattern paper here for the outside. Now your side pieces, where's the long one? 
if you look at these, they're exactly even. And if you look where we connected the um, chipboard pieces, you're going to have this little space here. So what I'm going to do is take these stretch construction strips and I'm going to fold them the opposite direction and then I'm going to attach them right there on that corner and that will cover up where those are joined so you won't see the joint and then you can trim it off or you can go ahead and trim it ahead of time if you want and show you one. So this paper backing on this bunch a little slow coming off. And then I want to go ahead and just fold it, fit it up to that corner. Make sure you're not extending over here. And then go ahead and push that down. And now you see when we add our outside trim, you're going to have just a tiny bit showing there. And this one will come up like this. You'll just have this little bit of black showing, which will look fine. And if you ink the edges, that will help too. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my trim. This part gets no trim back here because we're going to do something different with that later on. But that's your basic construction for that. Your shelves will be glued in. <clears throat> and you're just going to fit them in where the on those score lines. You can just run it and you can feel that. Or if you want to, you can take a pencil... We're having a hard time seeing it and just make a little oh I'm out of lead on that one or a pen I'll do it with a pen because you're going to cover it up but you could take a pen and go down your just to give you an idea of where that is So this way you know where your score lines are and where to set your shelves. You could also, I think you could change that to a draw line if you wanted to in uh, your software so it would draw that on. But you're just going to glue those, glue the left and right ends and the bottom. Just pick your best side showing. That also will have a little piece coming down. Put those in like that. Maybe. And there's your shelves. And that will complete the inside. So the next time we'll be back. This will be done. My outside um, pattern paper will be put on. And then we'll start building the front shelves. So I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, I have a correction in here. Um, last time I told you... Um, We'd go ahead and put your all your pattern paper on, and then I would be back. Well, I forgot about the hinges. So you can go ahead and do the top and the bottom, and your back, but don't do the left and right sides because we have to make hinges so that the doors will open and close. So you'll need two construction strips, and these you're going to fold. Let me see. No, it would be. I had it right the first time. Like this. And what you're going to do is apply them right along this edge. So I'm going to take this off. And then I'm going to apply this right on this very edge here. Again, you want to get it as close to the edge as you possibly can. Make sure you um, burnish it down real good. And then you're gonna leave it. Don't remove this strip. Because once we get our um, 
front doors made, then we'll attach this, and that will allow it to bend both ways. Um, so go ahead and do both of those sides, and like I said, don't pull this strip off, leave it. And then once you get that done, then you can go ahead and apply your side paper pieces. So that's the correction. Okay, so we're back with the last leg of our project, um, the curio cabinet. And here you can see I already finished this, excuse me, last night. And um, you can tell how it's sitting. It's hinged on the side. Remember we put these hinges on when we last left off? So I've hinged it. I've added the um, coffin inside, the insides are finished, and the outsides are finished. And it will just open and close just like that. We'll have a handle on here. We're going to decorate it, but I'm not going to show the decoration part in the video. So, um, this is how we prepared it. This is our other door. And you can see it's we made the box just like we did the back of the cabinet where you use the... Um, Hopefully you can see that. The um, construction strips to connect all four sides and then on the corners, we've connected them. So now all we have to do is put our pattern paper in. And, um, oops, I'm gonna put the back in first. Let it fall down inside there and secure it. And on the sides, we're going to ink up. You could ink this back piece up too if you wanted to. It's just that there's not that much of it that shows. So that's kind of just up to you. One side, whoops, I'll get hold of it here. And that's all you do to it. Um, for those who don't have not used this ink before, it's a uh, Tim Holtz distressing ink, and he does sell these little um, tools and they're little foam pads that you put on the back, and they're held on with Velcro. So, um, you can pick those up. They're on Amazon, too. I'll put a link to it um, in the post. I have all the materials listed on the post that I've used in this project. I get most of my supplies from Amazon simply because I can get it sent to the house and it's quick and easy. Okay, so there's our pieces. And now we're just going to glue these in just like so and here's the other side okay now that part's done. So the rest of it, we're not going to ink these. This is for the outside ahead of time. We're going to ink them after we've got them applied because there's a specific way we're going to do it. But before you apply, well, you can go ahead and apply all but one side. If you'll turn your box this way, you're gonna note that it's this side is where you're going to hinge it. So I'm going to take and so I don't get confused, make a big X that I can see with a pen or pencil or marker or whatever. So I'll know not to head attach my paper to this side right away. So we'll go ahead and start, and I'm gonna show you how this is, how you do this, and then we'll come back. I'll uh, stop the video and come back when I've got it all done. So your first piece, you wanna take your score tape. Let me close my glue up. And you're going to apply a piece, three pieces, one along this back edge. Oops. One down the middle. Get 
and one down this edge. And then you're going to take your piece of paper and on one edge apply a piece of score tape. Now I'm going to take the score tape off the backing, off of the paper and the box. Oops, that one doesn't want to stick. Well, darn it. There we go. Sometimes they come off really easy and sometimes they don't. Okay. Now, the, the, on the paper, the side that you have the um, score tape on your paper, that goes towards you and the back of your, sh your box goes towards you. So then you're going to center this right along that front edge. Make sure it's attached. Good. <clears throat> I forgot we were supposed to put a piece on here too, so I'm going to do that real quick. Oops. Well, if I can quit sticking to it. because we're going to actually wrap this around. So once you get your tape on there, you can go ahead and remove that backing. And what you want to do is, on these corners, you want to start and you want to just clip that corner just like that. both sides just get clip it right up next to the corner of the box so then this piece will fold over this end will fold over and then this back piece will fold over and you want to burnish that pretty good Go ahead and do the sides. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and attach it now, and then I can do the other pieces afterwards. So the unfinished side, this is going to go like this. So you need to remove this piece of tape. And you're going to take the edge of your box and fit it up right next to Attach that piece right like that. Then you're going to come in here and score it down. So that makes our hinge. Now, I got mine off center a little bit, but that's okay. Now we can take and add our tape, one piece along here. Don't cross over onto that hinge. Make sure you don't do that. And the center piece. And you could probably not use that center piece, but I just thought it would be best to go ahead and use it. Doesn't hurt to add a little bit of security. to trim your corners. Fold over your end. Fold over 
this end and fold over this edge. I'll live with it and then on the end they're not going to fold over on the let me open this they're not going to fold over on the edges they're only going to fold over on this one side towards the front so we'll go ahead and put a piece of tape here at the bottom piece of tape here and then on our paper we're going to put a piece of tape across one side hopefully you can see this kind of blocking the light there aren't I so a piece of tape across one edge and on the ends, now we can remove that tape. Oops. And a piece with the tape goes towards the front. I'm gonna open this. And I wanna add this, whoops. Kinda of tricky on this bottom part. And you wanna clip your ends. Fold it over to the top. Burnish it. Now we'll do this next one. And fold that down. Let's burnish it good. Now we're going to take the cover we're going to add score tape around all four edges strip down the center just for added fun Okay, and now we're going to take and place this, and you just want to center it as best you can. And then burnish it good. And 
now you're going to come along the corners the edges and you're going to do this on all the sides especially right here on these edges Till you've got all the edges burnished. Or inked, I'm sorry. Okay. And then we're going to take and glue our other coffin in place. Push on this just just for the heck of it just to make sure and then you just let your coffin dry and that's it then you'll have your little skeletons or whatever you're going to put in there you can go ahead and start decorating the inside at this point and it will close up just like this and it's supposed to be snug so that then it won't just flop open or shouldn't well it might because of the hinges but that's it and we're going to I've got some decorations I'm going to put on the front here and on all these sides probably not the bottom or the top just the um, fronts here and that'll be it. That's all there is to it. You can add some little handles here. You could add a closure here if you want to. Um, most of the time it will sit open like this. If you have one like this that's moving, see I got this off and it's up higher. If yours is regular, it will, but we're gonna put feet on them. So then that should help them stay. And for feet, I'm just using these little wooden beads. I'm gonna paint them black and glue them to the bottom. I'll glue one on each corner here of the back and then one on the fronts of or the outside edges here and that's all there is to it so I hope you enjoy it when um, I get mine finished I'll do a little um, after video showing you how I've decorated and everything if I do anything special um, I'll let you know and I'll add to this video um, once I get my outside pieces on I'll probably come back and show you that. I'm not sure if that will be something that I will put in the SVG files or not. It just depends on where I get it from. So we'll see how that goes. Until then, add a little bit more there. So I kind of want them to be similar so I didn't get quite as much on this one. And a little bit more here. there so I hope you enjoy the project I'd like to see if you um, make the project drop me a, an image so I can post it up on my blog and um, I'll see you next time we do another project have a great day bye